Stemming from Winnetka and Illinois in the USA, Robbie and Frederick have joined forces together to create the well-known electronic music group called Louis the Child. Louis the Child are known for creating quite colourful, childish-like and very bubbly future bass and electronic music. Louis the Child produced quite bright, vibrant, col colourful and quite childish electronic music. These are formed of sounds such as bright future bass leads, bright future bass pads and even wild and unique instrumentation such as steel drums. So in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a song just in the style of Louis the Child. Hello! <laughs> it's going to be a bit be about the fifth time I say this this year but I'm, I'm back. Um, it's been a while again. I do apologise. Can't do anything about it unfortunately. Um, but I was just reading YouTube comments the other day and I noticed a, a fellow viewer called Wagger commented underneath my disclosure video asking if if I could do a breakdown of Louis the Child. Now I've not really listened to a lot of Louis the Child and I know that might be a bit surprising because I'm a future bass boy and, and all that. I, wrong, I know a couple of the big hits but I don't actively listen to them if you know what I mean. Um, so it, it's been a bit of an experiment for me this one but uh, I've been doing a bit of research on them and how they create the sounds and how they put it all together so so in today's video I've just created this little demo that I'm just going to play for you now um, and basically I'm just going to go run through it and break down how I've created this. Um, as always if you like it please stick around till the end of the video um, and see how I created it uh, and as always if you leave a thumbs up and a subscribe it helps me out a hell of a lot so yeah without further ado this is what I'll be breaking down today Yeah, as you can tell, that's quite a mallow demo. Um, I know it's very hard to categorise Louis the Child into just one singular video because, they, I, I, from what I've seen, their style is pretty diverse. Um, I mean, you, you can go from a bit of harder trap with weird experimental elements on top to like this, which is quite a laid back sort of beat. Um, I believe this is what Louis the Child is known for though, like quite a laid back sound, like as you can tell like the main lead in that is very chilled, there's no like harsh plucks or anything or any like harsh noises as such um, in this mix. So, so yeah, without further ado, let's just jump straight in and I will break down how I've done this. So starting where any good tutorial should, um, I'm just going to break down what exactly I've done in the drums here. As you can tell it's very very simple. Just going to add the hi-hats in. So let's break, break this down one by one. We've got a very simple drum pattern here uh, that just has a tiny bit of variation at the end of the four bars. There's nothing that special going on here. Uh, the snare, I've managed to layer different layers to this. So you can tell it's quite clappy and quite panny. Is that a word? Um, but yeah, it's almost like you're hitting a saucepan with a wooden spoon. Um, but what I've noticed Louis the Child do, they don't use a lot of these snares that you'd find in like sample packs, like cymatic sample packs. Uh, they, they normally go for more organic, natural sounds. So here I've managed to layer around four snares. One's an actual snare uh, that I've just found again in a sample pack. One's a bit more processed that you might find in a normal electronic music sample pack. Another one another actual snare 
and then another one that you'd find in a sample pack and together they create this hybrid snare that's a mix between these processed electronic snares and real acoustic ones. And as you can tell, it, it's not like a normal snare like you'd find in like a San Holo song, Nightmare song, etc, etc. As I say, it's quite organic, it's quite natural. And I've done the exact same here. I've managed to find Inner Cymatics Bundle, uh, I, think, I think called Toys or something along those lines. Um, and they actually have this uh, little, what was it called, a ball machine? Your, your guess is as good as mine. Let your imagination go wild with that. Um, but basically, they, they have these little strange sounds, which I think are from child toys. Then again, I've just sort of chopped them up, reversed that one twice. Um, and they just add a little layer on top of this kick and snare that we've already got. You know what I mean? They just add a little, little bit of spice instead of any like high frequencies from hi hats or whatever. It just adds a tiny bit of spice. I also thought this would be fitting because, as I say, I've noticed Louis the Child put a lot of childlike elements into it. I know they've recorded like child xylophones and what have you in the past. So, so yeah, I just thought that'd be nice to to add in just as a little homage. If you would, and along with that, we have these very offbeat sn uh, not snares. We have these very offbeat toms. Then I've also added that with a little pluck on top, just to add a bit of spice. And then along with the elements that we've already got, that sound a little bit like this. Now I know Louis the Child are a big fan of uh, toms in their music, uh, just for example, there is one of their most popular songs called It's Strange, featuring Kay Flay. Tell there's just odd toms going underneath there, just not exactly keeping a rhythm, they're just all, almost adding that element to the um, drums. Another reason I didn't go for this sort of style uh, when doing this tutorial video is that I know this song is very flume orientated, um, obviously it sounds a lot like his older stuff off his first album. Um, so I didn't want to do that because then it would be a bit of a mashup between Louis the Child and Flume and I wanted to direct it between their sound, what they're most known for. So I decided to keep it that way. Um, and then very finally on the drum section is the hi-hats. Nothing special here. There's another thing I've found it if they add hi-hats into their songs, they don't go crazy with them. So like I've got a closed hi-hat literally every beat and then an open hi-hat every off beat basically. Uh, then this little layer on top. You know what I mean? You can have some artists and they'll go like crazy with hi-hats, even me included, I'll add like a massive layer of hi-hats uh, just to fill in like the top end. Um, another thing to be known to do, I've not done it in this track because I didn't think I needed it, uh, but like if we go back to this example of It's Strange, you'll notice in the top end there's no hi-hats, but there's just this noise layer. Let's just go back and hear that. You can just hear that noise just buzzing around in, in like the very high frequencies. So that's a nice element to add in if you choose to do that sort of style. Um, and then, so yeah, in total then we have this drum pack. You can really tell it's quite chill. It, it's not too in your face, it's not too compact, it's not too compressed either if you know what I mean. It's just nice and mellow just to carry the rhythm of the song. Cool. So if we go to their signature sound, um, obviously a lot of you are here for the simps. I know that people know how to do drums and that, I understand. Uh, I just like breaking it down because obviously it's an integral part. And without drums it would sound very very hollow. Um, so if we go to the simps, we have this main layer which is carrying the chord progression. <laughs> 
So just before I go into sound design, I'll just quickly show you these chords. Uh, originally, I did write this in A minor just to make things easy. It's just a key down from that at the minute. So we start with this uh, first chord, which is the A minor seventh. And then we just go down one to the seventh chord um, in, in the scale. And that is a G minor seventh. Then we go down to an E minor seventh, which is then the fifth in the scale. And then back up one to the sixth in the scale. So the chords stay quite near to each other. Uh, there's nothing complex going on here. It's just a new chord every bar. You can make it more complex, but again, I don't think Louis the Child wants to make it more complex. As I say, they, they, they keep it quite mellow, they keep it quite childlike, so they keep it very, very simple. And, and that's not a dig at anything. Um, I'm not saying simple is bad. I'm just saying that is their style. Um, obviously, I, I know a lot of simple songs um, that some of them just have like one or two chords, but this is the whole point of Louis the Child's style. It's just keeping it simple, keeping it fun, um, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> I've been able to do something quite nice, nice with this. So there's three main things which are going on here. The filter cut off. So without that, it would sound like that. Which is already giving you the same vibe, that's because this envelope is controlling the level of that. But the main thing, again, how to create this mellow, chilled sound, um, is basically altering the attack on the envelope. Uh, so without that, it would sound like this. And without that on there. Which again just sounds very clicky, attacky, it doesn't sound very mellow as such. So let's take that back to it was and then now as you can see it just gives you that one sort of effect. And then if you add the filter it creates even more of a mellow tone. So if again, if you, if you had to guess, what's also happening here is this creates the first little one that you get, the initial opening of the pad, I can guess you can call it, uh, and then on LFO3, I've got it delayed just by a quarter of the beat just to allow this first one to come in, and then that just plays play simple eighth notes. So you can tell that happens first, and then basically the LFO comes and alters it after. Again this just creates a nice little pattern to it so instead of just doing one apes throughout it, it just adds as I say a nice little pattern. And then a little bit of music theory of what's happening in the second part we have this little lead which is probably Louis the Child's most famous style lead. <laughs> And you can tell by, its, by itself, it's very confusing, it's very disorientating because it doesn't really have a rhythm to it, it doesn't really have anything which, which, which allows the listener to know the tempo or what rhythm it is supposed to be playing. If that was played by itself, it's basically just noise. <laughs> um, and the reason I've done this, before I go into how I've done it, um, is because I noticed they use this a lot in this in one one of the most popular songs called Better Not. And you see the, the sound there is quite similar to the one I've made. And that's another thing that if I, I believe if, if I manage to just have that one sound that's in there Better Not video, um and it was just played by itself. No one would understand uh, the context of it, or, or, or how you're supposed to dance to it, even because it, it again, it, it's very offbeat. It's very, very jarring in a sense. But again, that that creates that nice, unique element, and again, it creates this fun little sound um, that you're not really supposed to understand, but it just creates a nice little tonality a bit of like a bit of a wow factor if you would so how i've created this sound um if i take off the arpeggiator 
So it is just basically flicking between two notes. So it's flipping between this B and this F sharp, which in context of the chords is the second note and the fourth note. And that's what I've done for the rest of these two notes that is in here, which is why the actual melody of it sounds quite familiar to the chords because it is literally just playing the second and the seventh of the chord. So obviously without the arpeggiator it sounds a bit like this. But obviously that sounds very very boring. Um, so I've decided to add underneath this arpeggiator. So what is happening here and what creates a nice little melody and, and it also creates that bit of a jarring effect is this groove. So if I go back to straight and we're on just 124. Which already sounds quite nice, but it, it, it's very, very chaotic. Then if I take it down, it just starts sounding boring. Then you know how to jive with it. It's not jarring anymore. It, it's still nice, but it's very, it's very syncopated. It's very just just flat in my opinion then again if you take it down you know what i mean there's nothing unique about that but what this groove does it adds a bit of swing to it there we go like did did it did it instead of just -na 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 -na. which again just creates that jarring just bubbly effect because it, it, it in a, in a sense, you could you could you could imagine that it is just basically just like bubbles, just randomly popping. And then also to to add more octaves to it, I've shifted it twelve semitones and added two steps on it. So basically, it'll play them two notes, then it'll play them two notes an octave higher, then an octave higher than that. That's what I mean. It's just so fun. It's so bubbly. It's so it's so it's so just nice. I love it. Absolutely love it. So all I've done here is I've got a normal initialized sawtooth wave at, at unison 4 just to create a bit of a stereo effect um, with a filter on and the only special thing that's happening here is the envelope again. So if I take that off and put this back to zero. What a difference. What a difference. That's what I mean, that's just the filter and the envelope off. And again, if I play that in the mix, it will just sound way too harsh. See, no no one would be a fan of that. And then even even with the filter on, if, if it was like that, it still wouldn't sound good. just doesn't fit even though because it's very cause it's very offbeat it's very jarring um it, it's just not it's just not good but then you add this little bit of attack all of a sudden for some reason that sounds nice that actually sounds nice but before it, it just sounds too plucky it sounds too too harsh in the mix it just doesn't fit the style whatsoever so to be honest, Lou the Child have absolutely cracked that to make just a lovely mellow sound. And then just on top of it, I've just added a quick OTT, a chorus and a bit of stereo enhancement. Again, nothing too special. And then the last bit of my little chordy symphony bit is the bass line. Uh, so Lou the Child like using 808 a lot. And I mean a lot. Um, so I've just created a little distorted bass line, a, a bit like an 808. Uh, I didn't want a full-on 808, so I just wanted a bit of a gritty bass line. So that is simply just a, a square, a sign, and then a pitch down sign just going directly out. Bit of distortion, well I'll say bit of distortion, a lot of distortion, a tiny bit of OTT and just an equaliser just to take off the harsh top end. But what is interesting here in the chords is that it's not playing the root note of all of the chords. So that one is... 
second one isn't that's what I mean they, they're all just slightly off but they have this little descending tone so the bass by itself is quite sad it, 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 it's quite obviously because it's going down in pitch it's giving that downwards feeling that that sad feeling however with these chords and this happy bubbly melody you created this whole vibe um because obviously they're showing this little happy vibe whereas this bass line's playing quite a sad vibe and that's what i mean i, I felt like louis the child's like uh, vibe is this this whole it's happy but it's also sad at the same time and i actually absolutely, absolutely love that style style to be honest and that is pretty much it for the simps. All I've added in after that is just a couple of random vocal chops that I found in a sample pack. You got this, yeah. Obviously, if they had an actual vocal in this, you could add that in, more vocal chops, you can go crazy with the vocal on top of that. So just the last thing that I just want to show you in this quick tutorial is how to transition from like a contrasting intro into this chorus that we have. So I decided to change the chords up a bit and add this increasing bass line in the intro. Which is nothing special, this is just a sawtooth with a filter on. And this is just a pad that I found on Ableton. I've not really done anything there, but I'm not going to lie. And then I've just, all I've done is just wrote in this very quick melody that sounds quite happy and sad at the same time. But then all together it sounds a bit like... And then all of a sudden, once I wrote this little section, it's like, how the hell do I transition this into this drop? And the very simple answer to that is filters. <laughs> um, so in group 25, which is my chorus, uh, we have this little thing going on. Where just the chords and the little melody are just filtering in very, very slowly. Which again, it's quite inaudible there. Um, and then obviously, near the end of it, we do the adverse to this first group, this first idea. That starts filtering away. So you basically just swap them out. Um, but you just introduce little features to sort of carry that along. And already now, the listener's starting to get that idea that, okay, this chorus isn't going to be what I think it is. But then one thing I've helped just to introduce this section a bit more is this lead. Um, so basically grabbed the chords from the chorus and added it to this lead. And again, with the swing on, it's very jarring. It's very hard to pick up on a rhythm as such by itself. But that is why I add in these claps as well. Then they just help the user to understand the rhythm of it and get used to the tempo of the song before it drops. And then very simply what I've got just before this as well is the little toy artifacts that are in the chorus. I've just added them in um, just before the drop. This very simple white noise up and then an impact. This is another thing I've noticed Louis the Child do. They don't have like these crazy big build-ups like you see in most EDM songs. Again, they're quite mellow. There's just a few elements just to let them know. Okay, we're building tension up here. We're building tension up. But it doesn't need to be over the top. Because then if it's too over the top, the mellow drop will seem too mellow. If you see what I mean. <laughs> so again, this is just a very chilled way of adding in a bit of rhythm. You can imagine maybe like a vocal or something going on top of here. These weird abstract toy elements come in, builds up, everything filters out, whereas the chords are filtering in. Break. Then you just get hit by a vibe. Then you just get hit by a vibe. I like that. 
Then quite similarly on the outro. I've just filtered basically the chords and this little melody gets filtered back in. As if, as if like the, the chorus is just filtered on both ends and then and say just filter in like the, the verse and whatever. You. So yeah, that is basically a breakdown of having this Louis the Child um, style beat, you could call it. <laughs> um, yeah, as I say, the video would be way too long if I broke down almost every style they do. And and by all means, go and check them out because the, the styles are very intricate. It's almost like with every release, you don't know what they're going to be releasing. But I know this is what they are most known for. This sort of vibe, the chilled out vibe, the fun vibe, the bubbly vibe. Um, so I just wanted to show that off, basically. Um Again, from here, you, you can change pretty much any little element that is in this um, and create your own little twist on it, add your own little style into it. Um, but yeah, I hope this helps you in some way, especially you, Wagger. Uh, <laughs> thank you for watching my videos and what have you. Um, I hope, hope you managed to get what you needed out of this video. <laughs> I, know, I know I've learned quite a bit from this experience as well, so yeah, thank you for that. Um, so yeah, I'll leave you with that. Um, hopefully I'll be back soon with, and I know I keep on saying it, another video and maybe some new music. I mean, I've got loads lined up. I just basically need to stop being lazy and actually release some it for a change. Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Uh, just stay good, stay out of trouble, and I'll see you soon. Alright, see you later. Bye.